We've all heard of the 21st founding, the plans to cure gene seed floors left in ruins by repeated failure, the chapters cursed with new abilities or deficiencies as a result. Whilst many of the chapters founded at that time were tainted by their own issues or wiped out by the Imperium, there are those who continue to survive and even thrive today. In this log, we shall take a look at one of the latter contingent, long considered to be the greatest success of the 21st founding, but now teetering on the edge of destruction. They have survived their seemingly horrendous ill fortune and even managed to regain their honour after rebellions against the Imperium itself, but even their supposed genetic success has not lasted forever as their flaw has returned. Hailing from the gene line of Sanguinius, and last known to be led by chapter master Malakim Foros, they are known simply as the Lamenters. This is Tactica Imperialis, and welcome to 40k Stories. As mentioned in the introduction, the Lamenters are a chapter created in the 21st founding, which took place in very late M35 or early M36, around the time of the Age of Apostasy. The goal of the founding was, broadly speaking, to eliminate some of the more obvious or problematic gene seed deficiencies, which made the Blood Angels, who of course had the Black Rage and the Red Thirst, an ideal candidate. As such, a chapter was created from the stockpiles of the Sons of Sanguinius, and for a long time, the experiment seemed to work as far as the Lamenters, as this new chapter was named, were concerned. For a long, long time, the major flaws in the Blood Angels gene seed did not appear. Whether this was due to it being somehow suppressed during the creation of the gene seed, or the Astartes themselves simply having greater control, the Black Rage in particular, the one that creates the Death Company, never seemed to trouble the Lamenters. There were scattered reports that under extreme duress an individual Astartes might slip, but it was nothing compared to their cousins on Baal or the other successors notoriously wiped out by the floor. At some point in later times, it is believed that the Blood Angels themselves tried to get in touch with their cousins to try and find out what their secret was, but they seem to have had no such luck in even finding them, never mind establishing ties. However, for all their apparent success of their genetics, that did not mean that the Lamenters were home free. They were a sign of the 21st founding, and that always came with a cost. In fact, even if they had been totally pure and perfect, which they weren't, we'll get to that, they would still have had a dark cloud of disrepute hanging over them, such was the Imperium's opinion on what is now widely known as the Cursed Founding. Such was this disdain and or concern that by early M37, the Imperium and the 21st chapters were arguing about whether they had even earned the right of continued existence. I suspect that if some had their way, the 21st would be expunged from all records and the chapters spawned from it would be purged as well. That never happened, but the fleet-based Lamenters seemed to use this time to quietly sneak away, relocating to the western edge of the galaxy in Segmentum Pacificus to go on crusade for a millennia and a half. Unfortunately for the Lamenters, despite their gene seed seeming to be pure, something else was still working against them. If you believe in such things, you would say that it was fate itself conspiring to blight this chapter at every turn. We don't know when it first started to happen, or when it started to become something of a trend, but the Lamenters have suffered throughout their existence with a terrible streak of ill fortune. Even the Emperor's Tarot, the psychoactive divinatory tools believed to be linked to the Emperor himself and commonplace throughout the Imperium, foretells of misfortune in the paths walked by the Lamenters. In fact, the cards seem to suggest it's only going to get worse, which, if again you believe in that kind of thing, has got to be very disappointing. But how does this luck, or lack of it, actually manifest? Quite often, it results in the Lamenters being stuck in last stand scenarios or against other hopeless odds, which has very much reduced their fighting strength on several occasions. One such example, though not necessarily tied to luck but more to their heritage, came after the High Lords of Terra called the chapter back from its stupidly long crusade. This was part of a strategy to repulse or contain the forces of chaos leaving the Eye of Terror, presumably in response to the Ninth Black Crusade, seemingly launched in 538 M38, though dates seem to vary depending on who you ask. 
Though much of the work done by the Lamenters in that time is lost to history, one battle has been logged in its annals, the Relief of Corillia. This battle was supposed to pit the Black Legion against the Lamenters and the Mortifactors chapter, an ultramarine successor. Unfortunately, the Mortifactors weren't about to be associated with one of the cursed founding chapters, and they just left the Lamenters to the defense of Corillia alone. I'd like to believe they were censured for it, but given what the Imperium was saying a millennia prior, I'm not sure. As a result, the Lamenters suffered horrendous losses against Abaddon's forces, and the consensus is that they would have been wiped out in that battle were it not for the arrival of a White Scars and Ultramarines relief force. In the end, only 200 of the Lamenters were left alive after Corellia, but there will be no respite for the chapter at all, as their ill fortune reared its head in possibly the largest way seen up to that point. Almost immediately after battle's end, the entirety of the chapter's remaining forces were caught in a warp storm and disappeared from the galaxy. Quite how long they were gone by their own perceptions is unknown, since time works in many weird ways when you're in the warp, but by the clocks of real space, it was roughly a century, if not slightly more. We don't know strictly what year either Corellia or the return from it was, but roughly a hundred seems to be about right. Once they were back, I assumed that they were put through the most stringent and rigorous examinations to ensure that they remained pure and uncorrupted by their time in the Immaterium. People have died for going anywhere near the warp, so they must have been really put through the ringer. We don't know what it entailed, but the Lamenters were a cursed founded chapter who'd also been through the warp after other chapters from the cursed founding had turned traitors, so I really do suspect that it was not a pleasant experience for them. But that said, they passed the test, whatever they were, and they were returned to active duty eventually. Following that, it seems as though they just got back to doing what they'd been doing for much of their history, and going out on massively long crusades. This time, rather than the fringes of the galaxy, they went in the opposite direction and operated around the galactic core region. The dates, or at least the estimations of them, make this second crusade even longer than the first at over 2,000 years. But when it came to an end and they were called back once more, things for the Lamenters got a whole lot more complicated. In approximately 587M41, the Senatorium Imperialis recalled the Lamenters from their crusade just as they had before. This time, however, it was not in direct response to any invasion in particular, but instead was part of what was pretty much a wider insurance policy. Along with the Astral Claws, the Mantis Warriors, and fellow Blood Angel successor the Charnel Guard, the Lamenters were assigned to the region surrounding the Maelstrom Warp Rift as part of a group called the Maelstrom Wardens. Unsurprisingly given the name, their job was to protect Imperial space near to the Maelstrom from whatever dangers were issued from the second largest, at the time, Warp Rift in the galaxy, and they seemed to be damned good at it. Though the Charnel Guard were pulled away from this task before too long, firm bonds of friendship were apparently formed between the remaining chapters. It's believed that this bond was at its strongest between the Lamenters and the Astral Claws. Given the Lamenters had been shunned by the Mortifactors the last time they had known allies, one can understand why the Astral Claws respecting and or being nice to them was such a big deal for them. The Lamenters also had one battle in this time that may not have been in the region, joining the Ultramarines and many others in the Corinthian Crusade against an Orc War in 698 M41. Once again, they took heavy losses, this time in a shock assault on a mining world filled with human slaves. This battle is known as the Liberation of Slaughterhouse Three, but it was not a happy victory for the Lamenters, though they did succeed completely. In what they saw as the only way to prevent the Orcs from re-enslaving all the humans, possibly due to their own losses, the Lamenters were forced to kill said humans, as traumatic as it was for them to do. However, as time went on back in the Maelstrom, the Astral Claws chapter master Lug Furen began acting out against the Imperium. He wished to launch a crusade against the Maelstrom but was denied, so he began to withhold ties and stockpile resources. How much the Lamenters were exactly aware of what was going on is unclear, but if they tried to intervene, it fell on deaf ears, and if they tried to help, we have no records of such. Either way, in 901 M41, when the Imperial Taxman came calling and got destroyed for his trouble, 
Curran gathered the lamenters and the mantis warriors and laid out what he called his Articles of Just Secession, which attempted to cut ties to nearby sectors through the Estates guarding it, though they would still defend it against anti-imperial threats. Even at this point, the Imperium as a whole wasn't that fussed, but when an investigating force from the Firehawks chapter were boarded by the Mantis Warriors in 904 M41, things changed drastically and the Badab War was on. The Lamentis aligned with Huron and the Secessionists, but their role in the war was somewhat limited from what we know. Part of this was due to the presence of the Marines Errant, a 23rd founding chapter who had won great renown during the Corinthian Crusade that the Lamentis were also on. The two considered themselves honour-bound as a result of their actions in that war, and so when they encountered one another, their fleets would just drive each other off without really engaging. That didn't mean there was no fighting between them, however, as in the later part of 904, a combined Lamenta and Astral Claw fleet would all but wipe out an Imperial force, leaving only the flagship of the Errants alive. Eventually, the war escalated once again as the Imperium finally got its response in order and sent in a combined Astartes army to deal with the Secessionists. Again, the Lamentus didn't see a lot of combat that we know of, though their fleet was involved in a major naval engagement known as the Battle of Silent Reach. This pitted them alongside the battle fleet for the Maelstrom Zone against the Red Scorpions and others. Interestingly, there wasn't a huge amount of casualties here despite being the largest battle of the war to that point. Later that same year, 906 M41, the Lamentus seemed to try something a little less direct, launching another naval attack, but this time on the rearmost Imperial sectors critical to the supply lines of their enemies. Fortunately for said enemies, the Firehawks had been pulled away from the front lines by overall commander Karab Kuln and were able to, just about, drive the Lamenters off in a seemingly much bloodier engagement than Silent Reach. However, in 908 M41, the ever-escalating conflict would finally end the work of the Lamenters within it. More accurately, the relatively newly introduced Minotaurs chapter hunted down the Lamenters' battle barge and fortress monastery, the Mater Lacrimarum, and baited the entire chapter to rush to protect it. As you do, it's your flagship. It worked brutally well, as the Minotaurs launched boarding assault after boarding assault on the arriving fleets and hammered the Lamenters to such a degree that many chapters would likely have been horrified by it, which is probably why the Inquisition rotated the Minotaurs in at the expense of those who would have taken offence. We don't know how many Lamenters were alive before this battle began, probably most of their strength given the nature of the fights we know they were in, but by the time the Minotaurs were finished with them, only 300, most of them wounded, were left alive to surrender. This pulled them out of the Badab War entirely, and whilst the typical fate for treachery would be execution or the like, the Imperium was somewhat lenient with the Lamentus, and all the secessionists exactly, save the Astral Claws, who became the Red Corsairs, as we know. You see, Joining the secessionists in the war was, for the Lamenters at least, a question of sovereignty as opposed to betrayal. It was as though the independence of the Adeptus Astartes themselves was being threatened by the attack on the Astral Claws. When you see it through those eyes, perhaps it's less of a surprise that the Lamenters joined their new allies in protecting what they saw as theirs. Perhaps as a consequence of this, or just because three or four chapters being destroyed would be far too much like hard work, the Imperium sentenced the Lamenters and the other secessionists to a 100-year penitent crusade. Whilst we don't know exactly what this entailed for the Lamenters, we do know the conditions imposed on the Mantis Warriors that could give us some sort of idea as to how it all went. The Mantis Warriors were stripped of their homeworld, and their chapter master was seemingly imprisoned for the rest of his days. This prevented the chapter from reinforcement during the Penitent Crusade, which you could call effectively wiping them out if they still happen to run into bad luck. Now, the Lamenters didn't have a homeworld to lose, they were always fleet-based based on the Mater Lacrimarum, and their chapter master was believed killed by the Minotaurs anyway, so quite what was imposed on them is kind of unclear. As with the Mantis Warriors, I am sure that they were prevented from reinforcing, and I would guess that elements of their fleet were seized by the Minotaurs or other chapters on the Imperial side once the war was done. 
We also know from a recent log that they were to be shadowed by a contingent of Red Hunters Astartes, though whether they were aware of this is unclear, as it could have entailed putting on a show to show that they were loyal as opposed to harbouring some secret issues. And when they set off on said crusade, guess what happened? That horrendous misfortune reared its head and struck them once again. Though they were sentenced to their penance in crusade in 912M41 at the end of the Bad of War, we don't know anything they did during it until roughly 992 or 993M41. At that time, the Lamenters ran straight into the galaxy's newest arrivals, the Tyranid High Fleet Kraken. This was very soon after Kraken had arrived, and it was on something of a rampage at the time. The Lamenters fought against it several times, losing a company on the mining world of Devlin, whilst arriving too late to save the agri world of Malvolian. Contact was lost with the chapter before long, to such an extent that Death Watch Lamenters, of which we know at least one, believed their brothers to be entirely lost. But word has come back that despite their losses, the Lamenters still endure. Quite what they've been up to, aside from reinforcing, is unclear, especially since their penitent crusade is now long over, so all the restrictions should theoretically have been lifted. But with the new Primaris Marines on the scene, and the Blood Angels perhaps looking to re-establish ties, perhaps there is one small twist of hope for this cursed chapter. Well, maybe, because their purportedly pure genetics have proven of late to be anything but... For you see, though we do not have a first date for the outbreak, the genetic curse of the Blood Angels that's damned them since the end of the Horus Heresy has finally caught up with the Lamenters. In recent years, the chapter's sanguinary or Calix priesthood have been forced to implement a full death company within their ranks. How many have fallen into it is unknown, but given the Lamenters were supposed to be free from the floor, any non-zero or negligibly small number is far, far far too many. And there you have it, a summary of the tale of the Lamenters. I regret that there is such a lack of information on their crusades and deeds, both historical and modern, as they are like many cursed founding chapters, as in we don't know much about them, there's just a lack of info. There are a few things I haven't discussed here, such as what we know of their possibly dead, possibly alive chapter master Malachim Foros, but I hope this log was informative nevertheless. Either way, one can only have respect for the Lamenters. They've survived discrimination from their fellow Astartes, a possibly but probably not justified rebellion against the Imperium, and a direct run-in with a full-powered Tyranid High Fleet. Whatever fate may have against them if you believe in it, this chapter simply refuses to give up, get the message, and just die. But, for now, we must leave them and move on. In our next log, I think I want to do something a little bit different. The individuals I wish to cover are a little like myself, if you will. Chroniclers, historians, storytellers, that sort of thing. Their broader stories are somewhat limited, but many of them as individuals have become minor legends in their own right. For now though, thank you for watching Tactica Imperialis, and I'll see you all again. Goodbye.